Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about flushing and locking of venous catheters. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be what is flushing a venous catheter? What is locking a venous catheter? Why are flushing and locking important? When to flush and when to lock a venous catheter? What are the recommendations related to flushing and locking? What are the different techniques of flushing and locking a venous catheter? And how to flush a venous catheter? Let's get into the topic. What is flushing a venous catheter? IV flushing is injecting a sterile solution, typically normal saline or heparinized saline, into an intravenous catheter to clear medications, blood and blood products out of an intravascular device and into the bloodstream. In simple terms, it is pushing a specified volume of sterile solution into a vascular access device. Now, what is locking a venous catheter? IV locking is also called saline lock. When the venous line is not in use, in order to maintain the patency of venous catheter, specified volume of sterile solution is injected into a vascular access device for future use. This is usually done for every 8 to 12 hours in order to maintain the intravenous catheter patency and to prevent occlusion. Next, why is flushing a venous catheter important? First is to maintain catheter patency. Next, to prevent intravenous complications such as occlusion, phlebitis, infiltration, etc. To prevent drug-drug interactions. While administering multiple intravenous injections, IV flush should be used between injections in order to prevent drug-drug interactions. Next is to prevent microorganism adhesion and biofilm formation at the tip of the catheter. Biofilm formation in an intravenous catheter refers specifically to the process by which microorganisms, typically bacteria, adhere to and grow on the surface of the catheter. These microorganisms can multiply and form a biofilm on the catheter. You can see the formation of biofilm at the catheter tip in the picture given below. Now, why is locking a venous catheter important? This is done in order to keep the vascular access devices for future access, to maintain catheter patency, to prevent clot formation, to prevent microorganism adhesion and biofilm formation at the tip of the catheter. Now, when do we flush a venous catheter? Venous catheter is flushed before administering an injection, after administering an injection, between injections, before collecting the blood sample, and after collecting the blood sample. Next, when to lock a venous catheter? When the venous line is not in use, in order to maintain the patency of venous catheter, Specified volume of sterile solutions injected into a vascular access device for future access. This is done for every 8 to 12 hours for short-term catheters and weekly in long-term catheters. Next comes flushing and locking recommendations. There are several types of vascular access devices. The types of flushing solution and volumes used depends on the type of vascular access device being used. Normal saline that is 0.9% sodium chloride is one of the most commonly used solutions for flushing and locking IV catheters and it is an isotonic saline. Next, heparin is often used as a locking solution to prevent the formation of blood clots within the catheter. It is available in various concentrations with 100 units per ml being a common choice. Heparinized saline, a combination of normal saline and heparin, is used as both a flushing and locking solution. The concentration of heparin 
in these solutions can vary. The choice of solution depends upon the institutional policies. Excessive use of heparin leads to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and is a rare but potentially severe complication. Now comes flushing and locking recommendations. The type of vascular access device, for an example, peripheral line requires lesser volume of flush when compared to the other lines such as peak line and central line. Next is, it depends on add-on devices attached to the venous catheter. Example is, extensions attached to the intravenous catheter. So, the volume would be calculated on twice the internal volume of the catheter system or IV cannula plus twice the internal volume of the extension used. See the picture. The internal volume of 20 gauge peripheral catheter is 0 0.10 ml and the internal volume of the add-on device extension attached to the IV cannula is 1 ml. So, 1 ml plus 0.10 ml is equal to 1.10 ml and the volume needed for flushing should be double. Hence, the volume required for flush will be 1.10 multiplied by 2 which equals to 2.20 ml. Patient specific considerations include patients with CKD that is chronic kidney disease and patients with fluid restrictions. The purpose of the flush includes to clear the line from medication or to lock the line. The same concept for calculating volume of saline for flushing, which was discussed before, is presented with a different picture for a better understanding. Just have a look. Hope you have a better understanding now. In flushing and locking recommendations, next comes flushing and locking techniques. First is, aspirate blood if required. After scrub the hub, attach the flush and aspirate a small amount of blood to verify catheter patency. If resistance is encountered, do not force it. Next is, positive pressure techniques. This helps to reduce risk of occlusion. Manual ways of achieving positive pressure includes disconnecting the syringe from the needleless cap while still exerting pressure on the plunger during the last 0.5 to 1 ml. Another technique involves clamping the catheter while injecting the last 0.5 ml. Positive pressure flushing technique prevents blood from backing up into the catheter by keeping pressure on the syringe plunger while pulling out of the injection cap. Do not completely empty your syringe of flush. Next is push-pass technique. Turbulent flush is a rapid stop-start or push-pass technique that is meant to clear the catheter of blood or drugs that may adhere to the inner lumen of the catheter. In flushing and locking recommendation, next comes syringe use for flushing and locking. 10 ml diameter syringe barrel is specifically designed to generate lower injection pressure and this may help lower the risk of catheter damage caused by injection pressure. Large diameter syringe barrels generate smaller amount of pressure compared to small diameter syringe barrels assuming the same force is applied to the plunger. Next comes flushing and locking methods. The ACLs of flushing and locking are A is to assess the status and function of the vascular access device to confirm location and patency. C to clear medications and solutions from the vascular access device to avoid any incompatibilities. And L is to lock the vascular access device during periods of non-use to ensure patency. In flushing and locking methods, next comes the order of IV injections. This is as follows. First is yes, which is a normal saline flush. Followed by A, that is administration of drugs or fluids. Followed by S, that is a normal saline flush.
The use of similar sequence is even more important for blood sampling procedures due to the viscous nature of blood. SBS where S is for a normal saline flush followed by B for blood sampling followed by S which is again a normal saline flush. If the procedure ends with a heparin log that is H, the acronym is SASH or SBSH. Heparin flush will be the final step. So, so far we have discussed what is flushing a venous catheter, what is locking a venous catheter, why are flushing and locking important, when to flush and when to lock a venous catheter, what are the recommendations related to flushing and locking, and what are the different techniques of flushing and locking a venous catheter and how do we flush a venous catheter? So here you go with flushing and locking of venous catheters. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.